Good morning and welcome to worship with us here at First Presbyterian Church of Omaha. My name is Leanne Johnson and I'm assisting Pastor John with services today. First, some news of the church. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Presbyterian women will not be hosting their annual bake sale and luncheon this year, but they do ask that you continue to support mission by giving money to the Heartland Hope, One World Food Pantry, or our own First Presbyterian Church Food Pantry. Checks can be mailed to the church or to Melissa Davis with Presbyterian Women. There are several growth opportunities that are happening on Sunday mornings. Uh, there's a Zoom meeting, uh, The Present Word, 915. Saturday morning, there's an organic Bible study outreach, and there's the summer book clubs, two options, Women Rowing North for women that are aging, and Reviving Ophelia to help guide growing up young girls. Um, you can contact the church office if you need information on the passwords to log into these programs. Finally, um, service Sunday was scheduled for August 30th, and one of the things we'll be doing is making masks. Um, these masks continue to be cut and need to be sewn out and embroidered uh, so that when we are able to gather again, we will be able to gather safely amid this COVID-19 pandemic. I'd like to invite you to greet one another, either by leaving us a comment on Facebook or giving us a thumbs up or a smiley face to let us know you're here and take this time to say hello to friends that are worshiping from afar. Good morning, First Presbyterian Church. It is great to have you here with us this morning. At this time, I invite you to join us in voice and spirit as we sing our first praise hymn this morning, Oceans. You call me out upon the water the great unknown where fiend may fail and there I find you in the mystery in oceans deep my faith will stand and I will call upon your name and keep my eyes above the waves when oceans rise my soul will rest in your embrace for I am yours and you are mine your grace abounds in waters your sovereign hand will be my guide where fear may fail and fear surrounds me you've never failed and you won't start now and I will call upon your name Keep my eyes above the waves When oceans rise My soul will rest in your embrace For I am yours And you are mine Oh, And you are mine
Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the water wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. I will call. Keep my eyes above the waves. My soul will rest in your embrace, for I am yours and you are mine. Amen. If you'll join me in the call to worship, we gather together to focus our minds onto the Lord so that we may see his glory. He is with us always through the storms in life, even if we struggle to see him when the waves are crashing against us. Too often we seek the Lord, find him, then lose sight of him as situations become overwhelming. The answer to every problem is to trust in the Lord. Once we set our eyes upon him, the storm loses power. Let us worship God. In my wrestling and in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence you won't let go. In the questions your truth will hold. Your great love will the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you. Oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise You will carry me safe to shore Safe to shore Safe to shore Safe to shore I won't fear what tomorrow morning will rise and sing. My God's love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Whoa, you are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness. I will follow you, oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse. 
I will trust the promise You will carry me safe to shore Join me in the prayer of confession. Dear Lord, we claim to have great faith, but doubt your ability to move obstacles out of our way. We believe you to be most powerful, but question how you can give us strength. We know you rule over the world and the elements, but still feel the storms that loom around us. Remind us that with eyes on you, nothing can keep us apart. Help us to see that with eyes on you, your strength becomes ours. Teach us that with eyes on you, there is nothing that can wash away your dominion over the world and all the storms that otherwise could cause fear and destruction. With eyes on Jesus, there are no storms too big, no waves too high, no thunder too loud. With eyes on Jesus, there is no grace not given, no mercy withheld, no forgiveness not granted. With eyes on Jesus, there is love, hope, and life. Thanks be to God. friends. Thank you for joining us here for our children's message this morning. Now, I'm going to show you something incredible because one of my favorite phrases and something that I think really applies well to our faith is seeing is believing. So I'm going to show you something that I think is incredible. Are you ready? This. This is my cell phone. Now, a lot of you probably have phones similar to this, or maybe phones that are even more advanced, can do more things. And when everyone has something like this, how could this be extraordinary? How could seeing this be almost unbelievable sometimes? Well, let me tell you. When I was growing up as a kid, I grew up in the 90s, and I'm very happy to have grown up in the 90s. A lot of cool things happened. But one of the most interesting things is I saw technology evolve at such an incredible pace. So for a lot of young people today, 
This is what they think of when they think of a phone. They think of a smartphone that can watch movies, play games, connect to anything in the world on the internet. But when I was a kid, this is what a phone looked like. It was something that sat connected on a wall or something that sat on a table and you made phone calls with it. That's all you did. It had this cord that if it got tangled, you would never untangle it. And that's what a phone was. And in my lifetime, which has only been 26 years, we have gone from this to this. Now, the reason I bring this up is because with seeing is believing is because If you would have told little four-year-old, five-year-old AJ that someday a phone not only would not need a cord, but could leave your house, could connect to any information in the world, could see people's faces, play games, watch TV, I don't know that I would have believed you. And friends, that's why Jesus had to do some amazing things when he was here on earth. Today we're going to talk about one of his more big miracles when he walked on water. He does this a couple times throughout the Bible, and it's one of the bigger things that he does. And he does these incredible, miraculous, amazing things so that we know that what we're believing is worth believing in, so that by seeing, we too can believe in the incredible power of God. And by believing in that, we know that everything else he says is also true. So friends, will you pray with me this morning? Lord God, thank you for your incredible signs. God, thank you for giving us undeniable proof that what you say is true. God, help us to remember these accounts, these eyewitness testimonies that saw your incredible miracles all those years ago and help it to remind us that what we believe today is still based on just as much truth as it was when it first happened. We say all this in God's name and all God's children said, amen. Thank you for joining me this morning. Friends, thank you so much for sending in pictures of you with backpacks you're donating or with backpacks ready to go to school or what your digital learning space looks like. Now, I know this may be a little different than we normally do a blessing of the backpacks, but we feel it is just as important to help send everyone back to school on the right foot and to remind each and every one of you that no matter how far apart we may be, We're still here supporting you. We're still here loving you and wanting you to succeed. So with that in mind, friends, will you join us for our blessing of the backpacks liturgy? Lord God, help us as we grab our backpacks and get ready to go back to school this fall. Help us to open our minds to learn and our hearts to grow in you. Give us comfort as we boldly step into a school year that may look a little different than what we're used to. We know that you have lovingly laid the path before us that we travel down now. Even though there are so many questions on the minds of teachers, students, and parents alike, we know we can always count on you to travel on our journey with us no matter where we go. Friends, it's easy to focus on what might be different as this academic year begins. While there will be changes, there are some things that will never change. That is the love of Christ 
and the support of this congregation. Lord, let these tags be a reminder that no matter where we learn or how far apart we may feel, your love and the support of your people will never be far apart from us. Amen. Thank you for joining us for the blessing of the backpacks. Our scripture reading is from Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. Hear the word of the Lord. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. Later that night, he was there alone, and the boat was already a considerable distance from the land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. Shortly before dawn, Jesus went out to them, walking on the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, Take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid and began to sink, crying out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, he said, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat boat, worshipped him, saying, truly, you are the Son of God. Let us pray. Lord, give our hearts open hearts to hear your message today. Give my lips the words to speak and our minds the understanding to hear it. We praise in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. So if you were in the uh, Omaha area this week on Thursday morning, we had a torrential downpour. And it kind of came out of the blue. We had actually slept with the windows open because it was such a beautiful night. And I had looked at the forecast when I woke up and thought, eh, it's going to be a little bit warm. I'll go ahead and close the windows. So literally, while I was um, driving on my way in, it started to sprinkle just a little bit. And within seconds, it was a full-on downpour. There was lightning, there was thunder, and at the bottom of our street, we had a lake formed that was at least five to six inches deep that cars had to pass through at high speed because it was a major road. The rains just came out of nowhere and it was torrential. And for about an hour, hour and a half or so, we had these waves of heavy rain come through until it all cleared up and was nice for the rest of the day. That's how I envision what happened on the Sea of Galilee that day. So as we read our passage, there's a few things we need to realize that we're walking into, um, recognizing what's just happened, because the passage starts and says, immediately after that. So the first thing we should ask ourselves is, after what? What had happened? The authors of the Gospels are very careful when they choose words, so they didn't put the word immediately in there, just randomly or by happenstance, but to truly connect one miracle of Jesus to the next. So immediately before this, he fed the multitude. And we talked about this in last week's sermon. Immediately before Jesus sends the disciples across the lake, he had fed thousands of people after the disciples had thought it not possible. If you remember, they had gathered um, on this hill after um, Jesus had performed miracles. Jesus and the disciples went off on their own, but people followed. And suddenly there were thousands and thousands of people on the hill to hear Jesus speak. And the disciples said, where are we going to get enough food to do this? Where are we going to get enough food to feed them? Where are we going to come up with the money to even buy the food if we could get enough food? And if you remember, there was a little boy who said, well, I have some loaves of bread and some fish. And, and the disciples were skeptical, saying, 
even that's not enough. And Jesus said, have them sit down. And he gave thanks over the fish and the loaves and distributed it to the thousands of people. And if you remember, there was an abundance of food left over. There were 12 basketfuls left over. So Jesus literally responds to the disciples' inability to step out in faith when they feared not having enough. They feared not having enough money. They feared not having enough food. He stepped out and performed a miracle and provided. He didn't just provide. He provided enough for the disciples each to take home their own souvenir basket of leftover food as a message to trust in Jesus. So after feeding that multitude, Jesus sends the disciples ahead of him to the other side of the Sea of Galilee. And after the disciples set off across the water, he goes off to pray on his own. While he's praying, evening comes, the winds pick up, and a storm forms. And now Jesus displays another sign. This sign is just for them. The feeding of the 5,000 was a sign for the multitude and the disciples. He fed all these people and sent them a little nudge to say, not only did I feed them, but there's enough for you to take home. We've got this covered. You can trust in me. Now Jesus performs a miracle just for the 12, just for the disciples. The sea gets rough. The disciples in the boat are getting battered by the wind and the waves. And Jesus comes to them, walking on top of the water. The disciples are already fearful. The boat's getting battered. And so their first reaction when they see somebody walking on the water towards them is, it must be a ghost. And Jesus says calming words. He says, take heart. It is I. Do not fear. And Peter then challenges Jesus, and he said, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come to you across the water. And Jesus does. Jesus says, come, and Peter does. Peter begins walking across the water towards Jesus for a little while. But then... Peter loses focus. Peter's walking across the water, trusting and placing his faith in Jesus, and he begins looking around and seeing the scary things happening around him. He loses focus. His trust and faith vanish, and he begins to sink into the waves. I think it's interesting. He doesn't just drop into the waves. He begins to sink into the waves. So we're not dealing with normal um, scientific knowledge. We're not dealing with gravity. We are literally seeing faith begin to waver. Peter begins slowly descending into the waves. As he realizes what's happening, he calls out to Jesus and says, Save me, Lord. And Peter is rescued. Immediately, Jesus reaches out to him, caught Peter as he was sinking. And asks, my child, why did you doubt? And as soon as Peter and Jesus get into the boat, the wind ceases. And those in the boat once again realize that Jesus is someone special. Jesus is someone with a miraculous command of nature and the elements. And they worship him. Now, I thought, as we worked through this message, there are messages here for us. There are takeaways for us as we deal with life in very uncertain times, life in unnerving times, life in a time where it's easy to not place full faith in the Lord. And I've come up with five takeaways. So if, for those of you that like to take notes, there's five very easy takeaways from this message. Um, and the first takeaway is this. Jesus always has a message for us. It is constant and it is consistent throughout the scriptures. Take heart. It is I. Do not fear. 
We see that all the time when God interacts with humanity. Don't be afraid. Do not fear. And when Jesus is dealing with the disciples, he's saying, be comforted. It's me. Don't fear. That's the message Jesus still has for each of us. In those times where we notice the storm brewing around us, take heart. It is I. Don't be afraid, for I am here. It's not a ghost. It's nothing more scary than what's already going on. It is Jesus approaching us saying, take heart. It is I. I am here with you. Now, the second takeaway is this. We always want to test that. We always want to test, don't fear. We always want to test Jesus saying, I am here with you, just like Peter did. If it's you, show me a sign. Make it clear that you are with me. Make it clear that I can trust you. Make a comet cross the sky. I used to do that when I was growing up in Arizona. Lord, if you're there, show me a sign. Gideon did it with the fleece in the Old Testament, knowing that if God is with him, he would wake up and the fleece would be wet or dry. It's our nature to say, prove it, Lord. Prove that I should have faith in you. Make some miracle happen. Heal the sick. Fix a problem. Show me that I can trust you before I trust you. And even when that happens, we still eventually lose that trust or faith. When the waves come up and we notice what's going on around us, we begin to sink from that level of full trust in the Lord, let me walk on water, to it's getting scary, and we begin to lose sight of the Lord. You know why that happens? Because proof that happens before faith is placed ends up causing our faith to be reliant upon known facts. And faith, by its very nature, is trust in the unknown, the unproven. It's the trust we display when we believe in something that we cannot empirically prove. We can't see, we can't taste, we can't hear, we can't feel. And so we have faith in something. But when we believe something when it's proven and we walk on water, faith is no longer required because Jesus has demonstrated, demonstrated proof. Proof is not faith. Proof is what we have seen. Faith is what we can't see. So no wonder when Jesus proves it is him, it allows Peter to trust Jesus in the moment. It allows us to trust Jesus in the moment for we have seen him work at that moment. We know Jesus is there. But then something happens again. The next time, and the proof we've seen may not apply in the same way. When we see proof, we need to see it over and over and over again, and it actually weakens our faith. What we need is faith before we see the proof of what we've had faith in. Because faith given before the miracle, faith given before proof, is faith that remains and resides and bonds itself in us so that the next time something comes up, we instantly can have faith rather than seeking proof that Jesus will save us. The third takeaway from this is keep your eyes on Jesus. I wonder if that's how we are now in this world that we live in uh, in mid to late 2020. We trust but then we get distracted with what's going on in the world. And we lose sight of Jesus because of the distractions. The waves seem bigger than our Savior walking on the water. And when we lose sight of our Savior on the water, when we are distracted by the things that are scary, we begin to sink. 
One moment we are walking on water, our faith is there, our confidence in the Lord is strong. But then the world happens. Relationships get stressed. Pandemic hits. Jobs change. Schools start. Deaths happen. And we begin to slowly sink back into our human nature of mistrust and lack of faith. But we simply need to call out, Lord, save me, like Peter did when he began to sink. And when we see what's happening around us and we grow fearful, we simply have to cry out, Lord, save me. Because Jesus is there reaching out for us. We just need to take his hand. When Peter was rescued, Jesus immediately reached out. Peter said, Lord, save me. And the scripture tells us immediately Jesus reached out and took his hand and kept him from sinking. And then Jesus looked at Peter and said, what happened? I can just imagine those times when we cry out to Jesus that he immediately comes and takes hold of us. He rescues us. He holds our hand. He keeps us from sinking. And then he looks at us and asks, My child, what happened? You've had faith in me before. What happened now? Here's our fourth takeaway. Jesus is in the storm. Jesus doesn't remain outside of the storm that's happening in our lives. Jesus is present with us with whatever is happening. Jesus is in the midst of the storm when he takes our hand And then Jesus accompanies us back to safety, and that storm passes. He doesn't remain in the boat. He doesn't remain distant while we're sinking in the water. He doesn't say, no, you come to me. Although in today's passage, when he says that, it's because Peter is testing him, and Peter is in the boat, and Jesus is in the storm. Rather, when we are in that storm, sinking into the water, Jesus is right there with us. And the moment we call out, he is there taking our hand, keeping us from sinking, accompanying us back into the boat. Jesus came into our world as the child Messiah, Emmanuel, God with us. He lived as one of us. He knows what it is to be human. He knows what it is to fear. He knows what it is to be in pain. He knows, he knows, he knows. And he says, take heart. It is I. Do not fear. Jesus has had every emotion we could possibly have. And he comes to us when we call. When Peter began to sink, Jesus approached Peter, took his hand in the storm, brought Peter back into the boat, and the storm passes. And the same is true with us. Take heart, it is I, do not fear. And here's the final takeaway, and this isn't directly from Scripture, but it, you, can, you can gather this very easily. Jesus will always do one of two things. He will either calm the storm, or he will calm the one who is fearful. Jesus will always calm the storm, or he will calm us every time. Jesus is present. He tells us, do not fear. Don't fear either because the storm is solved or don't fear because I am with you. I have a video of a song I want to share with you which portrays this very well. The singer and author is um, Scott Crippen. I am hopeful we'll be able to get the video through. Um, We have a little bit of concern um, over copyright issues because there's automatic flags with YouTube and Facebook. Should something happen or should you want to find this video later, just look for the song, Sometimes He Calms the Storm by Scott Crippen. And be at peace and know that in all of the storms of our life, Jesus is there saying, take heart, It is I, do not fear. Amen. Long sail the sea of faith. 
find out before too long. How quickly blue skies can grow dark and gentle winds grow strong. And suddenly fever's like a white water pounding on your soul. But still we sail on, knowing that our Lord is in control. Sometimes He calms the storm with a whisper, "Peace, be still." He can settle any sea, but it doesn't mean He will. Sometimes He holds us close. That's the wind and waves go wild. Sometimes he calms the storm, and other times he calms his child. He has a reason for each trial that we pass through in life. Shaken, we cannot be pulled apart from Christ. No matter how the driving rain beats down on those who hold to faith, a heart of trust will always be quiet. He's for flames. Sometimes he calms the storm with a whisper. Peace, be still. Settle in his seat, but it doesn't mean he will. Sometimes he holds us close as the wind and waves go wild. Sometimes he calls the storm, and other times he calls his child. Stand. 
and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no Trust and obey. But we never can prove the delights of his love until all on the altar we lay for the favor he shows and the joy he bestows are for them who will trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Then in fellow ship sweet we will sit at his feet or will walk by his side in the way what he says we will do when he sends we will go never fear only trust and obey trust and for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. We enter into a time of the service where we lift up each other in prayer. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we come to you this day knowing there are things in the world that may frighten us, knowing there are things in the world that cause fear. May we find ways to turn to you and hear your comforting words saying, it is I, take heart, do not fear. We name those fears now, and Lord, knowing that you already know them but that it helps us as we lift these in prayer to give them up to you. We pray for new diagnoses in physical and mental health. Bring comfort to those who are dealing with change in their lives due to physical limitations and changing minds. Lord, be a comfort to those who are providing care for these loved ones. May they turn to you and know that you are there, that you reach out and seek to lift them when they begin to sink out of concern and fear. We also pray for those who have brought new life into the world and are watching their children struggle to survive. Be a source of comfort and strength. Surround this child with healing light that they may grow strong in you. Be with new parents and grandparents as they fearfully watch a new life struggle. Lord, in your mercy, hear this prayer. And Lord, we also pray for those recovering from surgeries that bones may knit together, that muscles strengthen, that tendons come together, that truly our bodies return to the way you created them to be. Be with patients as they work with therapists to strengthen their bodies and recover from these surgeries. We pray this in your name. And we also lift up our own concerns, Lord, our own fears, which we have been fearful to name. We lift them up to you, knowing that you already know our struggles, but knowing that speaking them provides comfort to us and that knowing you are there present, saying, it is I, 
Have no fear. Take heart. We pray all of these things in your name, Jesus Christ, as you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Recognizing that God is with us through all things and that God has given us everything that we have, we have an opportunity to give back out of thankfulness to the Lord. I invite you to uh, give via one of the many ways that are on your screen right now from something uh, as simple as putting something in an envelope and sending it to the church or using one of our electronic giving methods. Every gift that you give helps our ministry to continue and we know that God can multiply anything that is given. So I invite you to give to the Lord out of thankfulness and gratefulness. over these gifts to the Lord. Lord, receive these gifts and these blessings which you have given to us that we return to you. Multiply them in ways that we can't even begin to imagine. Use them to further your ministry of peace and justice and love and grace in the world until every tongue confess that you are Lord. We pray this in your name, Jesus Christ. Amen.
sins now and always thou and thou only first in my heart high king of heaven my treasure My King of Heaven, my Victory One, may I reach Heaven's joys, O bright head sun, heart of my own heart, whatever. And now receive the benediction, knowing that God is with us in all times of our lives, in our joys, in our celebrations, and in our trials and fears. He is with us in the storms, and he is with us in the sunny times of our lives as well, saying, it is I. Take heart. Do not fear. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and communion in, with, and of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love, the fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. When we are called to part, it gives us inward pain, but we shall still be joined at all.